Okay, this is the last one. Careful, Punchy. There. Don't even breathe. Oh, boy. Let's start him going. Uh-uh, uh Munchkin said I could jump over the first one. No way, Piggy. He said I could do it. Uh-uh. He said whoever set up the most could do it, so I'm knocking the first one over. Wait a minute. I set up more than you, Gonzo. You did not. I set up the most. Bunch in front of me. But I'm the oldest. Me start. Me start. No fair. Yeah. I wouldn't have set up so many if I knew I could knock the first so one over. Girls, go first. I guess we'll have to set it up all over again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah! What happened? I knew it. Whoa. <gasps> They're here. Who? The aliens. They've landed and, and three years of all its electricity. They'll be coming for me next. I heard them too, Beaker. Sounded like footsteps in the hallway. Ah! It's that ghost! <laughs> Don't worry, Fluffy. We'll set a trap for him. Gonzo? Is everyone all right in here? Yes, yes, Nanny. What on earth is all over the floor? Uh, just a couple of dominoes, Nanny. What happened to the light? The lightning must have struck a power line. It could be off all night. Here's a flashlight, Kermit. Thanks, Nanny. Come on, let's set up the dominoes again. But we won't be able to see them. That's okay. We didn't see them the first time either. Bobby! Sorry. Hey, my computer won't work without power. Yeah, neither will my record player. We can't even watch TV. Gee, without electricity, we can't do anything. Of course you can. Your imaginations work without electricity. But what can we do in the dark, Nanny? Well, when I was a little girl, I used to listen to radio drama and imagine that I was in the story. But radios don't work without electricity, Nanny. That's true, Piggy. But I've got some cassettes of old radio programs and a battery-powered tape player. I'll get it for you. Turn the flashlight on, Kermit. I'm trying. Huh? A ghost! Oh! Oh, yeah! Here you are, kids. These old radio shows were broadcast live from a studio. Really? Uh-huh. There were actors playing the parts and people making sound effects and others played music. Wow, sounds like fun. They should make the darkness a little more interesting. I'm going to check with the power company. I'll be back later. Go ahead, Bunchin. Play it. Okay, here it goes. Welcome once again to another action-packed episode of your favorite fearless pilot in the adventures of Purple Midnight. Hey, guys, did you see what I heard? Huh? Wait, I'll play it back. 
Welcome once again to another action-packed episode of your favorite fearless pilot in the adventures of Kermit Midnight. There it is again! Who, with his trusty sidekick, Animal, wow. is about to fly into the teeth of danger in part 12 of The Jungle Princess. Gee, this storm is a rough one. I just hope we make it to Bingo Bango in time to save the Jungle Princess. Princess? What's the fuel gauge say, trusty sidekick? So, ooh, gosh, I wonder if that's E for enough or E for empty. I think it's E for emergency! Uh-oh! I think we're in big trouble this time, trusty sidekick! Go bye bye! Uh-huh, I'm afraid so! Kermit and Midnight had landed safely, he wasn't aware that the beautiful jungle princess was at this very moment in the clutches of the evil spider king. Oh, gosh, I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me. Come on, animal. <coughs> Hurry, trusty sidekick. We've got no time to lose. <laughs> You needn't scream, Jungle Princess. Soon you will be my spider queen. Never! My hero, Kermit Midnight, will rescue me. Help! I'm coming, Jungle Princess! Oh, oh, don't worry, Jungle Princess. I, Kermit Midnight, have come to save you from the horrible spider king. You got it all wrong, Kermit Midnight. Huh? <laughs> You see, I'm the one who set the trap for you. You're going to be my spider king. I am? Help! Trusty sidekick, where are you? Huh? No, let me go, let me go. What? Return with us next week for another exciting story from The Adventures of Part 4 Midnight. You're right, Peter. This does sound like an interesting radio show. Come with us now as the Jupiter Radio Theater presents another mysterious episode of Sherlock Bunsen and Dr. Beaker. Oh no, Dr. Beaker. Smoking isn't healthy. I only blow bubbles. Sherlock Bunsen, the crown jewels have been stolen. You're right, Dr. Beaker. Only I, Sherlock Bunsen, master detective, can solve a crime such as this. Dr. Beaker, look, a clue. Just as I suspected. This is the footprint of the person who stole the crown jewels. The culprit is six feet tall wearing a dark cotton hat with a black mustache and a scar on his right cheek. How did I figure all that out? Elementary school, my dear bitter. He's standing right there. Don't try anything foolish. Nothing gets past the trained eye of Sherlock Bunsen. For instance, I can tell by the size of the shoes you're wearing that you are a cook who is allergic to bubbles. <laughs> and by examining the color of your pants, I can tell that you're a cook who is ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> and last, but not least, I can tell by this badge on your chest that you are <laughs> the Chief Inspector of Scotland Yard. That's correct, Sherlock. I solved this case hours ago. And I am arresting you two for assaulting a police officer, tickling without a warrant, and blowing bubbles in a no-bubbling zone. You want to know how I, Sherlock Bunsen, am going to get us out of this mess? Elephant fools, my dear Beaker, always have to do is not listen to the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
See you again next week when the Jupiter Radio Theater brings you another exciting episode of The Amazing Sherlock. I want to imagine myself in a show about a beautiful movie starlet. Why don't we put on our own radio show? That's a great idea, Kermit. That way we can imagine ourselves in anything we want. We'll need a microphone. I got it. Great. Let's set it up. Put the mic over here. Catch up to the piano. Grab a chair. Here's one. Animals, why aren't you helping? Me, awesome. Uh-uh. Get your sound effects stuff, animal. Okay. What are you doing, animal? Oh, these dogs. Thanks, animal. That was cool. Welcome. We're ready to record. Is the first act ready? Yes. That's better. We're on the air. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and uh, frogs. Welcome to the Muppet Broadcasting Company's Nursery Radio Hour. And now it's time for our first program, Fuzzy Bears and Animal Elmer! Yay! Good evening, good evening. Hello out there in Radio Land, and welcome to our show. Do you want to hear some funny jokes? Yeah! So tell me, Animal Allen, what do you call a great fish with jelly on it? The nerve! <laughs> You call a great fish with jelly on it a great jellyfish. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got a better one. And, uh, tell me, Animal Allen, what do you call a kangaroo in stuffing? <laughs> no, no, no. That's not right. You call a kangaroo in Scotland long distance. Get it? Waka, waka, waka. comedian that isn't funny. Good night, Animal. And now, from the moonlight cushion, high atop the nursery window seat, the Muppet Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you once again, Rolf Ellington and his orchestra! Sound effects. 
Were you animal? Oh. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, oh, yes. Up towards the creepy house trudged the weirdo. And so the weirdo knocked at the creepy door of the creepy house on the creepy hill. Yes? I'm here to solve the mystery. Oh, come right in. Who is it, Bunchin? Well, it's the weirdo, madam. The weirdo? The weirdo? The weirdo? The weirdo? What was done? That's right. What? And I'll bet you know more about it. More about what? Exactly. Huh? Ah, so it was Ha who did it. Huh? Ha who? Hmm, must be Chinese. Wait a minute. What is the crime anyway? <laughs> the crime? The crime? I'll tell you what the crime is. The crime is... 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 Ah, the crime is weird. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. The only thing that's weird around here is the, the weirdo. weirdo. Uh, uh, that's it, the weirdo. Aha! Uh -huh. So there you are. Thought you could fool me, did you? You'll never get away from the weirdo. Uh, uh, you weirdo! Uh, oh yeah! We'll see about that. Tune in next week for an even weirder adventure when once again we'll ask the mysterious question Who knows what weirdness lurks in the minds of kids? The weirdos do! Is everything all right in here? Oh, just fine, Nanny. Did you enjoy the old radio shows? You sure did, Mrs. Nanny. Hey, the power's back on! Yay! And just in time to watch our favorite nighttime show! <laughs> that looks pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, this is boring. Yeah, it looks like every other show. Well, I'll fix that. Nobody can see the picture now. Oh, that's okay, Nanny. Now it's like a radio show. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Little. Yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. It's much more fun to imagine the pictures than watch them, Nanny. For the search party, the creatures trapped Abigail in the tower. This is getting exciting. Look, there's movement in those bushes. Oh, no, it can't be. It is. It's, it's the creature. Hi, this is Kirk Fogg, your guide for Legends of the Hidden Temple. Stay tuned for Mayan Mayhem as Olmec shares the legend of the day and kids clash with athletic challenges and ancient riddles on Legends of the Hidden Temple. Next on Nick.